Okay, so here are a number of frames in various stages of disrepair that I have gotten from thrift stores. This one actually already has my original art in it and I like it, so I'm just going to reframe the back of it. Ooh, sorry, that's really shiny. That's um, an art effects panel. Um, and this is just a cool frame that clearly won't work for anything right now. Uh, my favorite frames are always wood frames and vintage frames. This is wood, clearly not vintage. This is wood and clearly vintage, and I paid a dollar fifty for it. And you can tell how old it is by how it's put together. <laughs> so we're gonna go over how to fix all this. So the first thing I suppose I should go over is what I'm gonna use to clean up the back of these frames and get them ready. One, here's a plier with a narrow tip because sometimes you have to get things out of awkward places. And I use that to get these nails out because we don't want to leave these in there and to get these off because I just, it's hard to turn them, so. And honestly, since this also is a clipper, which you're gonna find helpful if you have frames that have wires, it's a lot easier to get the wire off if you can turn each one of these little eye hooks independently. Yeah. So I have these little um, pliers, and then I have, and excuse how absolutely gross this looks, my art sponge. Um, I use these for as long as possible. It's just, I just use them to like clean out my palettes and stuff. And this is just to help me get the back wet. I should probably clarify here that because it is wet, the stuff in the paper isn't going to be airborne. And I don't know what was used in this glue. And because I'm a very cautious person, I would rather be safe than sorry. So I would rather get this wet and use the sponge to get it off than try to dry sand anything. So I'm not going to dry sand anything, honestly, if I can absolutely help it. So when we get to the spot where we are ready to try to get the paper off of the back, I have this wet sponge and I just get the paper as wet as I can. And then I let it sit. For those of us who lack patience, it might be good to have a few different frames you can work on because it's really good to just let the paper sit and soak for a minute to kind of like, guys, this. This glue is probably pretty old, so it's probably not going to hold very well once it's wet. Yeah, so we're going to let that sit and we're going to work on another frame. We're gonna have a little chat here before I move on. Basically, there are three different kinds of things that are gonna be holding your picture frames in that you might want to remove. I'm not talking about this kind of system where you can rotate it in and out because usually I'm probably just gonna replace this whole backing board because if you rip anything off of it, it kind of gets destroyed. So, there are nails and there are staples. And there are points and the points they kind of all they all do the same thing they hold your backing board in and they're all kind of things that you can kind of bend to move out of the way um, in my experience when I try to bend nails out of my way they just break <laughs> it's kind of the same for the staples I consider these both to be kind of more permanent um, they're not really designed to be have the back taken off and put back in they're kind of permanent Whereas these points, you, they're kind of designed to be bent at least a few times and then put back. And 
points. There are usually two different kinds of like hardnesses. Some of them are more flexible than others, and some of them you're just gonna you're just gonna hurt yourself trying to get them to bend all your way. In my experience, those are the hard, like the like stiffer points do that. Um, yeah. So I think this has been sitting long enough. So we're gonna try to just get some of the paper. Ah, oh, yeah, that's so nice. Look at how nice that's coming off. Ew, it's gross. Oh yeah, and by the way, you should probably have paper towels. Paper towels. So, this paper is coming off really easily because it's been soaking for a few minutes now. I gotta say, this is really relaxing for me for some reason. I really, I have so many of these frames and I'm so excited that I bought um, a kit. I bought a kit, a like a framing kit. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. Um, basically what it comes with is this, which is a, it's basically like a, um, a nail gun or not a nail gun, a staple gun, only it shoots points. Um, these things here, it puts those in. They're slightly different shape than that or yeah, you can see the tip of one. So it's got a point and that point goes into the frame like that. To hold your backing board in and I will show you guys how to use this too at the end of the video um, so yeah the kit came with this and it came with a whole bunch of stuff it came with picture hanging wire and um, the metal oh my gosh I don't even know what to call them metal loopy things that you can hang on the back of your picture to hang your wire from so it came with those and it came with the paper dust cover paper and it came with some double-sided tape that you can put around on your frame for to attach your dust cover I'm gonna go through all this I'm just letting you know it's in the kit uh, the reason that we want to get this clean is so that when we use the double-sided tape to attach the dust cover it has something that is clean to attach to so that it will make a good tight seal um, and while I am doing this, I'm also checking to make sure that the frame itself is in okay shape still. I mean, this has got a little bit of a wiggle, but I, I am okay with that. Using these happy little tw tweezy ply guys, ply guys, yeah, we're gonna call them that. Uh, we're just pulling the nails out. Um, I personally have glasses on. And anytime you're doing anything where something might fly and hit you on the eyeball, I recommend having glasses because eyes are important. So, so try not to get hit in the eyeball with stuff. Okay, so it is now a couple days later because that's how life is. This is completely dry and it is, I'm just running my hands along it to make sure there's nothing that's going to catch and there's nothing that needs cleaning. Sometimes when you get these frames, they actually like, um, not for this one because it's really thick, but the staples will actually like poke through to the outside of the frame. And obviously you want to make sure that that gets taken care of. Um, yeah. So the step that we are on right now is pulling this out. And I personally recommend that you at least do a little bit of cleaning on the inside of the frame because you don't want dust and stuff in there because then it will get in front of your picture <laughs> and show up when you're framing and you don't want that so like I would go through there and just give it a little cleaning too. Um, I'm pretty sure this frame has been around since the 70s so this is garbage. Ooh, that's really gross actually. <laughs> Can you guys see like the weird texture on this tape? Yeah, so this is garbage. I would assume that anything that comes in these frames is not acid free. Um, so I I just throw them away because I want acid free stuff, which I just buy the um, acid free backing boards and cut them to size and I'll go over that. So that's garbage. Here's this really old picture. It's actually kind of cool and I will probably stick it on my bulletin board for a while and then it'll get phased out when new things show up. Uh, here's the glass. This you want to keep, obviously. And you're going to want to clean it because 
I don't know if you can see, but it is really gross, especially around the edges. It's like brown. It's also got a price sticker on it. So, if you've ever seen my big fat Greek wedding, you know that this thing will solve all of your problems. So I personally recommend putting a good chunk of Windex on here and letting it soak for a bit because this stuff has probably been sitting for a long, long time and hasn't been cleaned. Ew! <laughs> okay. In the most interesting part of the video, I'm going to hold up clear glass to you and explain why it's awesome. <laughs> so, I am trying to hold this from uh, by the edges and also try not to touch it with my fingers because obviously that's going to leave fingerprints on your pretty glass so another way to do this if you are more sensible than me is to use gloves so I am going to say hey guys this is glass be careful when you're handling it it can cut you even if it's not broken and it doesn't seem like it can cut you it's glass it can cut you so be very careful <laughs> once you are fairly certain that you are comfortable with what your glass looks like you can put the glass back in see there's still stuff in this frame and I cleaned it <sighs> so there are two ways that you can go about cutting the backing board for this one of them is to measure this opening and I would measure both ends both directions because old frames are kind of I mean even new frames honestly new frames are the same way they're just never perfectly the same size all the way across so you'll cut something and you'll have to adjust and you're gonna have to do that no matter what it just is what it is but so I kind of cheat and I just take the glass back out and I just trace it and cut inside the line. So then, just test the backing board to make sure it's going to fit in there. And this is my little pencil drawing I did last night. It is a giant garter snake. And this is one of like our local landmark buildings. So I'm doing a series of illustrations of kind of fictional animals hanging out in our local landmarks. Now I'm just seeing what it looks like, and look at all the dirt in there. So clearly we have to take this apart and clean it again, which is the unfortunate thing about trying to frame your own pictures. So yeah, you can see little bits that manage to get in there. So I'll take it apart and clean it again, but I won't make you watch because that sounds boring. Alright, so I have recleaned everything, and it is looking much better. And honestly, at this point, I kind of take a step back and go, do I actually like this in this frame? You'll notice it doesn't have a mat, and that was intentional. I designed this sketch to go into this frame knowing that I wouldn't put a mat around it and it would just fit this size. And I don't know why, it just feels like the vibe, the vibe of this works for me. So, and that's one of the fun things about vintage frames that I really like is that, like, I just get to pick out a frame, I can design a piece of art to go in there, yeah. So next steps, uh, I, before I go on to next steps, I will say since this is just a pencil drawing, I am not putting a mat around it and I'm not putting a floater in because I don't mind my pencil drawings touching the glass. If this was a watercolor, I would definitely make a floater, which just means that like, I would either have a mat around the edge or some other means of of spacing the painting away so it wouldn't be touching the glass directly so but I don't do that for pencils sketches I don't worry about it as much so next step is we get out this gun thing so like I said this is a point driver it has points loaded in it and you can see them right there that's the tip of a point point. and so the way that you load points in here is you press this little thing down on the top and it opens up this thing and you can load the points in 
So you can kind of see them down there. And then you just slide it closed again. Somehow. <laughs> there, okay. Uh, yeah. And then it just works like a staple gun. You pull this to put the point in. So, essentially I would say like a four inch gap is good. Like this frame is almost so small that this side probably only needs one point in it. I'm going to put two anyways. So I'll probably just put two on each side for this because I'm a worrier. Um, I'm going to move this paper towel because it's bugging me. So here's how the point gun works. You just put it inside and the place where the tip comes out is right there. And then you squeeze it and like just to be safe, like don't put your hands here, okay? Like you don't need to mess with that. And then the point goes in. So, you can see it's driven into the wood. And some of these old frames, like I don't know if you just saw that, but like, it's not a bad idea to hold the frame together. <laughs> like, these gl were glued together like decades ago, so it's not a bad idea to give the frame a little reinforcement while you're doing this so that it doesn't fall apart. There. So far so good. That's all secure. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is put the dust cover on the back. And look, if you uh, are looking at this and going, um, something's wrong here, it's because I put the dust cover on the back and then realized that my kit came with something that makes putting a dust cover on the back of your frame a lot easier. And that is this dust cover uh, trimmer. So here we go. So now the first step is to put this double-sided tape down, and this also came in the kit. And we're putting that down really close to the edge, but not exactly on the edge. I have had to pull a couple of these dust covers off now because I have messed up. <laughs> And this tape is really good. I was worried that um, it was going to not be sticky enough to hold things on long term. That is not the case. Um, yeah, every time I've had to pull this off, it's definitely felt um, like a little bit of a struggle. So do not worry that this tape is not strong enough because I've had nothing... I've got nothing but good stuff to say about this tape. So yeah, if you're wondering why this has drill holes in it, yeah, I, I put the hanging hardware on here and everything, um, and then realized that I did it um, poorly. Uh, so I wanted to redo it for this video, and for the sake of my own personal training. Okay, so... Here we have our dust cover paper, and here we have our frame, and if you can see the shiny bits, it's got the double-sided tape on there. And then you just take the frame, and you flip it upside down, and you stick it on the paper. And then you just... Cut very roughly around it, just enough to like be able to flip it upside down, right? So now you can see where the frame is. All right. 
I haven't done this part yet, so we'll see how this goes. This is a trimmer, and you can see blade and safe on here. So when it's safe, obviously you can't cut with it. And when it says blade, it means there's a sharp pointy bit right there, so be careful. And if it seems like I'm talking down to you guys, I promise you I am not. I am telling this to myself because I am a bit of a goober. So, essentially you're putting this down and trimming just a little bit in from the edge at a like 45 degree angle. And it doesn't take a lot of pressure. This is going to turn out a little bit goofy because of the woven texture on the back of my frame. And this, it does score the back of your frame a little tiny bit when you're doing this. But it's not going to hurt anything. And honestly, I was scoring the back of my frames a little bit the way I was doing it as well. So. I'm kind of sad that the first one that I'm doing for you guys is, uh, does not have a smooth texture on the back because I bet it would be really a lot more satisfying to watch if it was just a smooth stroke. But it is what it is. It's lumpy on the back. On the plus side, now you guys will be able to tell that it works even if your frame is a little lumpy. So this is all done, except the probably most satisfying part, um, which I think some artists don't always do, but I think it's really awesome. I have to put this at an angle because it involves me writing. Um, I am going to put the title and the date and my name on the back because if this ever makes it in, back into a thrift store with my art in it, somebody's going to want to know who made it. So like I said, this is part of a series. So this is the giant garter snake at Setman Mill in Mankato, Minnesota, which is where I live. And that is my name. Should we hang this up on the wall? Yeah, we should. Here is where it is hanging on my wall. This is not its permanent home. It is gonna hopefully be sold next weekend. It's kind of cool to see it up there. Okay, so that is this week's video, and hopefully I can stay a little bit more caught up now. I do a lot of work to get done for this art festival that I am in, and it's in two weeks. I misspoke, I said next weekend. It's in two weeks, um, and it seems like not enough time at all for all the things I want to get done before then. Guys? Uh, let me know what you think of this video. Let me know if you have any questions that I didn't answer. I wanted this video to be a little longer, but I cut it down because it was getting very long-winded. Um, I do want to say that, so the kit that I have that I use to do the backing, I will put in the description. It's from Logan, and they make really great products. <laughs> you want to come up? Okay. Yeah, come here. Okay, kitten. Kitten wanted attention. Um, and if you don't pick her up, she just jumps at your face. Um, so, Logan makes really great project, products 
for um, matte, um, matte board cutting too. I have their matte board cutter and it's really great and I love it. Um, so I'll put that down in the description below even though you didn't see me use it in this video. It's really good. I like it a lot and it's very simple to use. I had never used one before I used theirs and I picked it up right away just like I did with this backing kit. So I'll put those links below and if I can find it, I will also put a link to some acid-free backing paper. Kitten, you're not helpful. You wanna say hi? Can you say hi to them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So you guys leave a comment, like nobody commented on my video last week and it was super weird. Usually you guys are pretty chatty. So yeah, say hi to me. Um, that's why I make these videos. I like to hang out with you guys. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.